This is my radio controlled jet fan powered car. It started out as a standard four wheel drive buggy but I've modified it so it is now driven by an extremely powerful yet compact EDF taken out of a model aircraft. But how did I do it, will this thing even drive well and most importantly how fast is it compared to the original? Let's find out! This small RC buggy is the base vehicle that we're gonna attach the jet fan to. I decided to do a quick GPS speed test as a baseline, Another one. just driving it full throttle up and down the road and looks like we got 46.4 km an hour. It's time to upgrade, so let's attach the EDF. Firstly we need to figure out a way to mount the EDF. So let's 3D design a simple mount for the jet fan on the back of the RC car. The download link for the STL files is in the description below. Let's print it out. That came out perfectly, but what if you don't have a 3D printer to make stuff like this? Check out PCBWay, the sponsor of this video. They offer a wide range of 3D printing and CNC machining services, utilizing plastics like PETG, PLA, resin and nylon, or even metals like aluminium, titanium and steel. Simply upload your 3D files and get an instant quote, then have the parts custom made and shipped to you within just a couple of days. With that, back to the video. After printing it out, the fan fits into it pretty snug. Oh wait, no it doesn't. These lips are preventing the mount from going in. Let's send them off. Alright, now it fits just perfectly into the mount. The two mount pieces are attached together with four and three screws and nuts. Now we just remove the rear wing and mount the fan assembly with two slightly longer M3 screws through the shock tower and shocks. Alright, so now the jet fan is attached, but we still haven't powered it. For that we'll need the electronic speed controller. Mine didn't really come with a plug on it, so I soldered on an XC60 and then I was ready to test it, because up until now I had no idea if the fan even had enough power to push the car. Oh my god! This is only on 2S LiPo! Alright, so that definitely has some power. Let's just finalize all this. Alright, so stock ESC is now out. Alright, servo is out as well. Now to put the new one in. Why is there grease on this? What the hell? After swapping out the servo from the weird stock 5 wire one to a standard 3 wire one, it was time to install the speed controller. Unfortunately, there was a problem. It's a little too large to fit inside this car, so... But it still needs a heatsink, of course, because otherwise it's just gonna overheat. See this old motherboard right here? It's got a heatsink. Now the ESC fit perfectly and now the only thing left to do before we can go test it out is to remove the drive shaft so it can free will nicely. Let's do that real quick. Okay, so as you can see the rear ones here are taken out and the wheels can just we will now, which is exactly what we want. Now for the front ones, and these ones are gonna be a little harder because they're actually attached to the axle here. Because of that I'm gonna be replacing them with some axles that don't have the drive shafts attached. Let's install them. So we've just taken out these four drive shafts here, 
and it rolls so much more smoothly now, which is exactly what we want. Look, all four wheels can free wheel now. Perfect. With that, it was now finally time to pop in a battery and test it out. Will this random idea I had just a couple of days earlier even work out, or was it all just a massive waste of time? Whoa, this thing's gonna go! Alright, so that run was on 3S LiPo and even though it already went pretty quick, let's just chuck a forest in there and see if it improves. Alright, let's try this out. Whoa, that is noticeably quicker, wow! Whoa! Holy crap! Now hold on a second. What you just saw there was the car losing grip on the rear tires and spinning out uncontrollably. But why did it do that? Well, as the fan pushes out more and more air at high RPM, it not only moves the car forward, but it actually also lifts the back end of it up, causing a loss of grip. To solve this problem, I first tried changing the mount's design to attach the jet fan further to the front, so more in the center of the car. This definitely helped, but not as much as I had hoped for and it also looked really odd. But then I had an idea. What if we just stick to the rear mounting position, but angle the fan downwards slightly by 10 degrees to cancel out the upwards movement? Let's try this out! And now I'm really hoping that this mount ends up actually working out, because designing, then printing and attaching all the different iterations and versions of this has been a whole lot of work. So fingers crossed that this angled one will finally make the car handle really well. Let's go try it out! With that, it was driving noticeably nicer at low speed, but will that be enough to stop it from spinning out and crashing at high speed? Let's find out. Alright, so while it's not perfect, it's definitely a lot better than before and by adjusting my driving style a little bit to let off throttle during turning, I was able to get it to go pretty dang fast. At this point, we're ready to take it out for some speed running to finally see if it's any faster than the stock configuration now. Let's go! Okay, so let's just do a test run first here and I'm really curious how fast this thing actually is now. Alright, so that was 57.4 kilometers an hour already, but I bet it has a lot more in it, so let's just try that again. At this point, it felt like my way undersized forest lipo was running out of juice, so I pulled it in to check the speed and... 61.2 kilometers an hour. Pretty quick, but I don't think it actually tops out there. So I came back the next day.
65.3 kilometers an hour. Oh my god, it flipped, it flipped. Okay, let's see what speed we got though. Oh, look at that. 68.0, that's quick, wow. Oh, look, the ducted fan came out a little bit, it's fine. The top speed we managed to get in the end was 68 kilometers an hour. Compared to the stock wheel driven setup at 46.4, that's almost a 50% increase. But it's not just about speed, because honestly, an upgraded wheel driven setup could have gone even faster. It's about the driving experience as well. And as far as I found, it's extremely fun to see this thing accelerate just being propelled by air coming out of the roaring jet fan, then watch it freewheel for miles in complete silence. That makes it different from any other RC car I've ever driven and it's honestly really fun to rip around with it. Now, enjoy this montage of me doing exactly that. Um, I am not sure how that just happened. I think I hit this. I hit a McDonald's drink. Huh? And it caused this amount of damage. What the hell? Um, what? I am actually so confused right now. What the actual hell? <laughs> okay, interesting. Well, I guess that's the end of that then. 